Hi, everybody. Welcome to this talk about modern JavaScript for Apex developers. I am Edith Valencia. I'm a software engineer at Designit in the United Kingdom. Uh, currently, I'm working as a Salesforce developer. But before this, I was working for many years as a Java architect, and I was more, more specialized in the backend. I have to admit that it was a bit hard for me to move from the backend to the front end. And that's why I created this presentation for you. Hopefully, this experience will help you. What we are going to see today is first, what is modern JavaScript? Then we will look through five uh, features of modern JavaScript. These features will help us understand aligning web component later, and then at the end, some conclusions. So we're going to start with a bit of history. Everything started in 95 uh, when Netscape Communications hired Brendan Ike to invent a language that they could use to add dynamic content to the web. So in 95, JavaScript was created. After this, in 97, um, Netscape sent a proposal for a standard to EGMA International. And in 97, the first version of the standard was published. So what this means is that uh, Netscape shared the specification of the JavaScript language, so every vendor could use it to implement their own. Several uh, additions happened uh, on 98 and 99 uh, in the standard, but then nothing happened in the standard in, in, for 10 years, until 2009, when the version 5 was published. Just a small comment in here, in 2003 is when I was working as a Java developer, and I tried to move it to the front end. But I found many problems, and mainly it's because uh, nothing was standardized at the time, and uh, there were many incompatibilities between browsers, and also because I was using Java as a framework, it wasn't that smooth. So it was in 2003 that I decided to stay back and just focus on the back end. Then many frameworks and technologies were created as well for JavaScript. And all of these technologies helped shape the next version of the standard that was released in 2015. And this is the version 6. And this is what we mean when we say modern JavaScript. There has been more modifications on this, to the standard. And we hope that uh, this continues uh, from now on. The features that we are going to see about uh, modern JavaScript is block-level declarations, classes, modules, arrow functions, and promises. There are many others, uh, but these are some of the, the ones that we see a lot in Lightning Web Components. The first one, block-level declarations, is something that is not uh, alien for us as Apex developers, because we always have had this. The only thing is that in JavaScript, they haven't had this until the version 6 of the standard. And what this means is that we can declare variables, for example, that we cannot access outside of a given block of scope. In JavaScript, this can be inside a function or inside a block. And this is uh, basically anything that is between curly brackets. We can use the keywords let and const to do this. So just as a reminder, in Apex, we, we have several scopes. Here I am declaring a variable that I can use in all the class. Here I am declaring a variable that I can use in just the method. And here I'm declaring a variable name that I can use just in the for loop. If I want to use any variable outside of the scope, like in here, I will get an error. We have also uh, constants in Apex. So in here we have an example. And the only thing is that we cannot assign another value after we created the variable, or the constant in this case. So how does it look like in JavaScript? Here we have an example. Here I am using the keyword let to declare a variable that is going to be visible in all this scope. Here I'm declaring a constant const to declare a constant that is going to be visible in all this block. If I want to assign a, va a value to a constant later, I will get an error. Here I can access my, vari my variable x whenever I want in my scope. The only thing is that I cannot declare a variable twice in the same scope with the same name. 
The next uh, feature will be classes. This is one of the features that helped me to understand JavaScript a little bit more. Uh, in, and mainly it's because when, whenever you see a JavaScript class, uh, it's similar to what we have in Apex, so it's not that difficult. Uh, the only thing is that uh, the classes in ES6 are basically syntactic sugar. So we can use them in our code or in our files, but at the end they will get translated into existing custom type declarations in JavaScript. One difference is that uh, in ES6 they don't have access modifiers. Uh, we know that in Apex we have global, private, and many others. And something that is similar is that in ES6 they support static functions, instance methods, getters, setters, and inheritance. Here we have an example of a, of a class. And here I am declaring the class uh, first using the keyword class, uh, same as in Apex. I can declare any fields that I want. I can have many constructors. The only thing is I have to use the keyword constructor. And I can, I can have as many methods as I want. Then if I want to use this class, what I have to do is to use the keyword new as we do in Apex. So if you see this class is like similar to Apex. Well, not that similar, but not that different. And the only big thing that you can notice is that um, they don't use types here. And this is not a feature of ES6, but a feature of JavaScript itself. So we don't have to say that height is, for example, long or integer, uh, because JavaScript is not typed. I also mentioned that uh, in JavaScript, they also have uh, inheritance. So in here, I am declaring a parent class that is called point. And here I'm declaring a child class that is color point. This class uses the keyword extent to use the uh, class point as a parent. And uh, similar to what we have, uh, if I use the keyword super, I can access the constructor of my father and also the methods, methods of my father. The next feature will be modules. And you can think of a module of just a chunk of JavaScript code that we have in any file. And the important thing of a module is that to export the functions of variables, it has to explicitly say so. If another module wants to import the bindings, it has to explicitly say so as well. In Apex, we don't have this uh, concept. As long as we declare our classes public or global, we can reuse them in another class. So in here, we have some examples of how to export uh, bindings from JavaScript. Here I am exporting a, an attribute. Here I am exporting a function. And here I am exporting a class. There is a concept that we see a lot in Lightning Web Components, and it's called single default export. And this means that the only thing that I will be exporting in a given file is one element. In this case, the only one that I'm going to be exporting is the class rectangle. To import, I have to use the keyword import to say what I want to import from that file and the name of the file itself. And at the end, I'm just going to use the code as, as usual in my JavaScript file. The next um, feature will be arrow functions. Um, for me, this is a pretty cool uh, feature in JavaScript because it, when you read the code, uh, I think it's a nice and neat and concise way of doing it. So what this means is that we can declare functions with a new syntax and it's just basically using an arrow. In Apex, we don't have this concept, but it, you can see it a lot in Lightning Web Components in, in, and in all, all around JavaScript, so it's important to know about this. Here we have some example of arrow function uh, declarations. What syntax you use, it depends really on what parameters and what return types you have. In this example, if I have multiple parameters, in here, if I just have one parameter, here, if I have no parameters, and here, if I want to return an object literal. Here we have an example, and uh, is a method filter of the, of the array. What this is doing is taking a, an arrow function and it's going to give me all the numbers of the array that are divisible by three 
and it's going to assign it to my constant. There's something pretty interesting and sometimes difficult to understand about Aron functions, but um, it has to do mainly with JavaScript and the keyword this. In Apex, whenever we see this, we know that we are referring basically to the current class, but in JavaScript, it's not that simple. Uh, this might refer to something different each time we execute our function, and that's a little bit different to what we are used to. Because this, uh, in JavaScript in general, is usually determined by a function's execution context. But if we use arrow functions, that is not longer the case. In arrow functions, this operates in the context of the enclosing scope. We'll see an example of this. Here I have this code, and if I don't know uh, about what I just mentioned, I might think that this number is referring to this variable that is defined here. And I am expecting that when I print this uh, code, I will get one, two, three, four, five, etc. Uh, every second. But when I execute this, I get not a number, a window, which is a, a kind of surprising because I am expecting uh, this to be counter. But the problem in here is that the function add is not really bound to the counter function. They are two functions that are not related at all. And so when I execute this code, the function add is going to be bound to the global object that in the case of the browser is window. So if I want to fix this in an easy way, I, I just have to use an arrow function and everything else and exactly the same, and I will get the uh, expected result. The final feature will be promises, and uh, promises uh, help me with asynchronous programming. A promise is basically an object that I can use as a placeholder for the eventual result of a deferred computation. So basically, with a promise, I can specify some code that be executed, um, and I also can explicitly indicate if the code succeeded or failed. In Apex, we really don't have a promise concept, but we have uh, elements that help us with asynchronous programming. Um, one example would be future and queueables. As we know, uh, we use asynchronous programming when we are executing some code that might take a long time. Here I have some JavaScript examples of how to declare a promise and how to use a promise. Here I am uh, declaring a promise with the keyword new, and it, this promise uh, takes two parameters, one to resolve and one to reject. These are basically two functions to be called later. After my process finish, I can call the resolve function if everything goes right, and the reject function if there was an error in the processing. Then later to use it, I can use this uh, syntax. There are many others, but this is one of the, the ones that we see often in learning web components. And if I use them, this will be executed when everything goes right, and I use catch to execute something that went wrong or the, when there were errors. So we are going to see now a learning web component, and I took this one from Trailhead build a bear. And the code is basically from this component, is the virus itself. So here is the JavaScript code. And we can see that we have several features of ES6. The first one would be modules. At the top, we are importing modules, uh, both from the Salesforce platform or, and from Apex controllers that I have defined. Then in this line, the features will be uh, modules, classes, and inheritance. I am calling uh, naming a class Berlis that extends or inherits from learning elements, and I will be exporting this class Berlis as the only export in this file. Then I am declaring several attributes. And in here I'm using a promise. Because get all beers goes to the back end, uh, I am using this promise, and when everything goes right, I will assign the result result to bears variable, and when I get an error, I will get uh, the error and assign it to the error variable in my local class. 
Okay, some conclusions. Uh, the road from Apex to JavaScript is smoother now thanks to uh, ES6 for us Apex developers. Uh, that JavaScript has a similar syntax to Apex is a big advantage. Um, this was actually one requisite when they asked uh, Brendan Ike to create JavaScript, that it has a syntax uh, similar to Java, uh, and this is very advantageous for us. There is lots of demand to code in JavaScript. Now in Salesforce platform, we have LWC, Evergreen Node, but because of Node, uh, we can see it all over in the industry. Uh, something that is good for us is that there are many resources around to learn JavaScript. And uh, just as a closing note, uh, remember that it is from 2003. Well, this is no longer the case. And I think uh, ES6 has helped uh, to make the experience of coding in the front end a bit more enjoyable. Here you can find some resources, mainly in Trailhead and one book that I use for this presentation. And you can get the code in the chat. If you have any questions, you can ask them. And thank you.